Welcome to ESPN's Holiday Hoops, presented by K Jewelers. Welcome to Allen Fieldhouse in Los Angeles. Today, Jayhawk fans get an early Christmas present. The long-anticipated debut of freshman Josh Selby. He joins the Morris Twins and one of the most efficient offenses in the country. As third-ranked Kansas hosts the upset-minded USC Trojans and Nikola Vucevic next. Presented by K Jewelers. Standing room only as usual at Allen Fieldhouse as number three Kansas looks to go to 10 0 against USC, a team already with a win against a ranked Big 12 team this year in Texas. Hi, everybody, with Bob Knight. I'm Dave Pash. Pedro Gomez here as well. Well, Coach Kansas comes in number one in the country in field goal percentage, scoring margin, and assists, and they get an added weapon. Josh Selby was suspended the first nine games by the NCAA, makes his anticipated debut. How does this impact Kansas today, Coach? Well, Kansas offense has been so good, Dave, in these first nine or ten games that they've played. I think it'll depend exactly on what Selby thinks he can contribute to this offense. If he comes in and decides that he's going to be a scorer, he'll have the ball in his hands, he'll be looking to score. That's not going to help the Kansas offense. If he wants to fit in well, he's going to have to get the ball to people. He's going to have to score when the uh, availability of the chance to score is there rather than trying to force things. I think that will be the most important thing for him. All right, Coach, everybody's talking about this kid, including our own Pedro Gomez, who joins us today. Pedro. As Dave, students started lining up at dawn in sub-freezing temperatures to be able to get to this game. These are students that have already finished finals, but they wanted to wait and see Selby's first game. But probably nobody wants to see it more than his mother, Mayshawn Witherspoon, who drove from Baltimore a few weeks ago to be here for the holiday season with her son. She started crying when she saw Josh in a Kansas uniform on the floor. There's another person, however, making a debut today, Gio Gio Fontan for USC. Gio is a transfer from Fordham, a very highly recruited player. Keep an eye on him as well today. And Pedro, there's some veterans who will share the spotlight as we star watch. Nikola Vucevic averaging a double-double on the year for USC. Last year was the Pac-10 most improved player. And he had 24 points and nine rebounds in their recent win over Texas. Meanwhile, for Kansas, Marcus Morris looking to bounce back from a sprained ankle suffered in a game last Saturday. He is Kansas's leading scorer and leads the Big 12 in field goal percentage. Well, you mentioned it, Pedro. Gio Fontan, the transfer from Florida, making his debut. He'll start in the backcourt with Maurice Jones, a five foot seven freshman guard. Simmons, Vucevic, and the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Alex Stevenson, right up the top of the starting five for USC. And for Kansas, Marcus Morris will not have his twin brother, Markeith Morris, next to him to start the game. Morris benched by Bill Self. Travis Relaford will start. We will see Marquise, uh, Markeith Morris and Josh Selby as well, even though Selby not started. Kansas has won 64 straight games here in Lawrence. That's the number one active home win streak. It's been three years since the Jayhawks' last loss at Fog Allen. That was the Texas A&M. Beat him at the buzzer. Yeah, back when uh, A.C. Law was leading that team. Really a good player. Kansas will start with the basketball. Here's Tyrell Reed, whose playing time, along with several other seniors, might suffer with the addition of Selby. Morris on the low block. We mentioned the ankle, showing no ill effects of that. Knocking down the game's first shot. Now, Kansas does as good a job, Dave, as any team in high-low post play and getting the ball inside. They just showed that there with Morris hitting the turnaround jump shot. Morris preseason, first team all Big 12. Kansas, very aggressive defensively. They'll switch a little bit, but they'll help really well. They're going to be a very, very tough team for Southern Cal to penetrate, and I think Southern Cal needs to be very patient in this game. 
Fontan turns it over on USC's opening possession. Not a way to start his college career, though a tough place to do it here in Lawrence, where Bill Self is 118 and six in his eight years as the head coach. You know, you just don't want to lose a possession like Southern Cal did without getting a chance to score. That's just like a possession that didn't exist for them. Taylor on the kickout call for the offensive foul. First foul in the game. Second year at USC for Kevin O'Neill. Kevin O'Neill's done a good job at a lot of different places. Northwestern, Tennessee, Marquette also spent some time at Arizona. Very, very good fundamental coach. That was a walk that Southern Cal got away with there. Yep. Fontan, again, you'd have to imagine facing some severe nerves, and that's the second time in two possessions where he's turned it over. And they've not gotten a shot on either one of them. Relaford goes into Maurice Jones, but a blocking foul is called on Jones. <laughs> This is really good situation defensively on this possession for Kansas. Morningstar plays it well. They get good help. We have people, Taylor, whoever it might be out there, is going to get into position to, to help out uh, Reed. It doesn't make any difference. So Travis Relaford at the line. Kansas is not a good free throw shooting team, at least through the first nine games. They're 11th in the league at 63%. It's interesting that the top two ranked teams in the Big 12, Kansas and Kansas State, are both teams that struggle shooting at the free throw line. And the problem with that is their offense lends to a lot of free throws, too. Southern, er, Southern Cal is going to have problems penetrating because of the help situation. There's a really good move to help by Taylor. And that's the third straight, and well, they're going to get a bucket out of it, but that really was the third straight possession. They didn't get a shot. Alex Stevenson cleaning up the mess. First basket of the game for SC. Stevenson has a wrap on his uh, left hand as Morris goes into the lane and misses, and Stevenson, who averages eight rebounds per game, takes it down. Stevenson trailing the play, and rebound by Morningstar. That was... That was USC's best offensive possession. They got a good 15-foot shot. Kansas has always used their inside guys to ball screen, and they're very good at slipping back toward the bucket after setting the screen. Entry pass to Morris. There's Morningstar off the screen, and almost banked it in, rebound by Vucevic. Kind of an awkward shot that Morningstar took. He really wasn't squared up. There's Fontaine coming off the screen. Transfer from Florida, making his debut. Maurice Jones, who had 12 points against Texas all in the second half, and that big win for USC. Shot clock at 9. Jones, nifty dribbling, could not hit it over Taylor, though. There's a ball screen. And Taylor, the open man. They go back to Morris on the low block, working on Stevenson. Morris for three. He's 11 of 20 on the year from three-point land. That's not bad, David, for a postman to step out and hit that one. Six feet, nine inches tall. He doesn't do that a lot, but that's when he set that ball screen and then stepped back, and the defensive man playing him went to cover the cover the man coming off the ball screen. Jones on the drive. Open man, and Simmons unable to knock down the jumper. And a foul on USC. Well, Kansas. Yet to put Josh Selby in the game. We'll see if he enters the lineup for the first time in his career when we come back. Here 
of the day is Josh Selby, freshman out of Baltimore, the preseason Big 12 freshman of the year, takes the court. Dave, I was looking around for Santa Claus to come in. <laughs> the kind of cheers that we had there, I thought it was early. And Josh Selby. He was suspended the first nine games for accepting impermissible benefits from a family friend that totaled about $4,600. He has to pay it back by taking it out of his scholarship, and then that money is donated to charity. He also had to sit out the first 15 practices while waiting for the NCAA to make a ruling, so he's not had a ton of time with his teammates. Kansas has very good perimeter footwork in its defense. And another USC turnover coach. Three seconds is called. And Selby's first possession uh, as a Kansas player was on defense. He did a very good job containing uh, his man, worked over a screen well. And that's a good sign for a kid coming in with his uh, hype and everything, working hard defensively. Is that the tougher adjustment, Coach, going from practice to games as a freshman? You know, I think so. I, I think having to contribute defensively for most kids that are highly recruited is the biggest thing for them. Taylor missing three out of there with it. Maurice Jones. He'll pull it out. Fontan's first shot of the game won't go from three. Really nice move by Jones. Not having anything bringing the ball back out. Smart. Selby with his first touch gave it up. Kansas gets it back to Morris. And a step back elbow J won't go. And Stevenson tapping it to Jones. USC just one of five shooting. And three turnovers already. That was touched by Kansas. And then Morningstar able to track it down. Selby on the drive it is called for a foul. Now they're going to just say that he stepped out of bounds. Just juggled the ball a little bit. He couldn't quite control the ball and get it back into the middle. He seemed juggle it right there just a bit. Made an awfully good pass with it, even though he stepped out of bounds. I think Mama thought it was a bad call. So Selby turning it over. He won the McDonald's High School All-America game dunk contest. So at six feet two, he can jump. And we'll see what kind of a shooter he is at this level. There's Vucevic for USC, only down four despite struggling offensively with now four turnovers and just one basket. Kansas has done a very good job against the ball screen. The defensive man slides over to help, and the man playing the ball has gotten over the top every time. There, there was no help coming from the opposite side. First collegiate basket for Fontan, the transfer from Fordham, and then USC with a foul on the other end, second team foul. Okay, here we see a real good step in by Kansas, but not very good help there. That was Selby who didn't move in to help out. Once he created a path, then Southern Cal was able to take the ball to the bucket. On the other end, the foul on Dante Smith is first, and so Markeith Morris did not start the game today. Bill Self uh, telling us before the game he wanted to see a little bit more energy out of the junior from Philly, so... Sat him down to start. It's a real art in taking away the drive to the basket and the thought that has to be at the top of each player's mind on defense is that our job, my job, all five of us is to know where the ball is and play the ball, defend the ball, defend the ball. We always have that uh, responsibility no matter where we are is to stop the ball. Kansas trying to stop Vucevic here with a good outlet pass to Dante Smith. Finds Stevenson and able to rattle it home. Really good drive move and a good look off with the pass. Second basket for Alex Stevenson. That was a great guard play. And Selby buries his first shot of three. Not a, not a bad uh, step out for him. Going back to Southern Cal was a tremendous pass made uh, on the way to the bucket because a lot of guys would have thrown up a bad shot, and that got Stevenson clear for the basket. 
Here's Dante Smith. Coming off a 22 point game against Northern Arizona. Is fouled by Selby. The drive is such a is such a big threat, Dave, because every time you drive, there's a chance there's going to be a foul. And that's where defensive footwork is so important. The sliding path of the driver, force the driver going to the outside toward the corner, whichever side he's on. And Elijah Johnson called for the foul. His first, third on Kansas. They did not get out on Dante Smith. Johnson was a little late. Smith hit the three. Selby back down the court, charging into the lane. Is fouled. Team foul, second personal already on Dante Smith. We got more college basketball for you today over on ESPN2 as Texas A&M faces Arkansas, followed by Gonzaga and Baylor. It's all part of Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers on ESPN2. So Selby at the foul line. Three points in the contest. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of a contribution he makes. Bill Self I was saying before the game that Kansas has not played its best game yet, and he thinks it's going to take till probably mid-January with a newcomer like Selby before they really hit their stride. You know, and I think that uh, Selby's contribution, as we said, is going to be uh, a many-faceted thing. It isn't going to be just as a scorer. Kansas really doesn't need any more scoring, but what they what they have to have with any newcomer is a guy that really fits into the tempo of their offense and works hard defensively. Wild shot by Fontan. And numbers for Kansas. There'll be another three-pointer. Uh, you know, I mentioned something to you about his shot when they were working out. I've seen him here in these two shots. He has extended his shooting arm all the way, much better than when he was warming up. Stevenson blew the layup. And out of there with it is Markeith Morris. Selby for another three. His first miss. Didn't need to take that one. He was under a little bit of pressure. He's made two. Uh, let's be happy with that. Move the ball. Or he won't go on the other end for Bryce Jones and traveling called on Selby. Now there's no question Selby feeding off the crowd. He's got a couple threes. Took that last one that wouldn't go. His mom. Sean Witherspoon certainly enjoying what she's seen so far out of her son making his first collegiate appearance. Finals were yesterday, but a lot of students hanging out to see Josh Selby's debut. He scored the last seven points of the game. We talked with Bill Self yesterday about his expectations for Selby today. The anticipation's off the charts for the kid. I kind of feel bad for him, to be honest with you. I'm excited for him, but I think he's going to have, feel a lot of pressure uh, initially, and uh, I sure would like to see that first shot go down. His first shot did go down. Looked pretty good shooting it, too, Coach. He had a good extension of his shooting arm, and watch it on the next shot if we show that. He has the same kind of extension. On, well, we're not going to see that, but his, his shooting technique in the shots that he's taken in the game, as we mentioned, Dave, are much better than his shooting technique was in warm-up. Played four minutes. He has the last seven for Kansas, which has a six-point lead on USC. You know, we talk a lot about free throws, and right now Kansas has had six free throw opportunities and Southern Cal zero. If it continues at that rate, it becomes a great, great advantage. Here's Fontan, and he's fouled shooting a two by Tyrell Reed. The Morningstar did a great job getting around two screens to cover Fontan as he moved to get the ball. But he left his control somewhere in the course of his moving to get there because he was totally out of control when Fontan went up for the shot. Now that's a needless three points that uh, Kansas has given away right here. At all costs, try not to foul the shooter when he's taking a three. They, they say he was uh, shooting a two. And they had him on the line. Yeah, even that, that's two points that uh, just should never happen. Reed picking up his first foul, 14 foul on Kansas. 
And Fontan now with four points in eight minutes playing in his first college game. Yeah. Kevin O'Neill, as head coach, says he's, a, he's their best player. Selby another three, and he's fouled shooting a three. Well, now, I must have been pre-scient in, in that because there is a terrible foul committed outside the three-point line that puts Selby at the line for three. All right, here comes the pass to Selby. Now, watch the defender come all the way out. He has no chance of blocking the shot, really, and he just knocks Selby away, gives him, say, hey, here's a Christmas gift for you. Fontaine's first foul, fourth on USC. I don't know if it's me, Coach, but it seems like these days you see more of that. Guys fouled shooting three-pointers. Well, it, you just eliminate it because if the offensive guy is adept at the shot fake, he eliminates that defensive player, and now you're playing five against four. And uh, this is almost like an early Christmas present for Selby. Selby's played five minutes. He's got 10 points already in his first ever college game. The last 10 for Kansas. Go at the shooter hard, but pull up short. Don't go past him. Go at him hard and short. Get a hand up and make him shoot over top of you. Just don't give him the chance at three from the foul line. Really good help there by Morris. Vucevic with a good pass. Marcus with... Uh, Markeith Morris, rather, with the block out of bounds. It'll stay USC ball. The shot clock's at nine. USC's had three chances to score inside, and the aggressiveness on the part of the Kansas inside defense has kept them from doing it each time. That was a big defensive play for Kansas. Meanwhile, Vucevic, USC's leading scorer, has not even attempted a shot. He does have two rebounds, but no points. Here's right. Fontan. Now that's where Morningstar fouled the last time, and that time he did a much better job containing himself. Offensive foul is called on Bryce Jones, the freshman charging into Marcus Morris. See, that's where the big guy really is alert to what's happening defensively. Watch Morris slide right here in great position. Not only does he draw the foul, but he eliminates the chance of a bucket being scored. Here's another look at it. Great move. Absolute charging foul because he got there in time. You've got to really be alert to draw a charging foul. You've got to be alert to help. You've got to know where the ball is all the time. Selby has scored the last 10 for Kansas. We'll see if they look for him here. Kick ball. Jayhawks trying to make it 65 straight wins at home. Longest active home win streak in college basketball. There's Tyshawn Taylor. Trying to work it around the Morningstar. Good hands by freshman Bryce Jones. Blew the layup, though. And Vucevic called for the foul. He came crashing in, trying to get the rebound of the putback. That's his first. Southern Cal just hasn't been able to uh, capitalize on what good opportunities they have here. Very, very good steal, good play, and can't come through with the bucket. That's two missed layups on the break. As Taylor pulls up, can't hit the J. Cleared by Vucevic. Taylor had Maurice Morris open in the post and decided to shoot rather than pass. And they're going to get Markeith Morris for a foul here. That's his first and the fifth on Kansas. 16 fouls at USC. He came out, Morris came out really hard on Vucevic there. And with no need, really. Got his hands on him. And again, a foul that was totally unnecessary. So he'll go to the bench. Thomas Robinson will come into the game. Robinson having a good year, 9.6 rebounds as Jones rises, misses. Uchevich keeps it alive, though. And Coach Self not happy with the defensive rebounding of his team. Good look, but Stevenson couldn't handle the pass from Maurice Jones. It was last touchdown by Kansas. You know, on that pass, it's much better when you're driving the lane and you're going to make a drop-off pass to put it on the floor and let it bounce up into the recipient's hands rather than trying to make an air pass. It's much more difficult to handle. The bounce pass 
off the drive is the pass to make. Much easier to handle, catch it, and go up to the bucket with it. USC with eight to shoot. Here's Fontaine working on Morningstar, gets past him and fouled. It'll be a shooting foul. See, I, you look at Selby, Dave, and, and Fontaine, both playing their first game, a lot of height for both kids. Selby has fit into the pattern of things that happen with Kansas much more, I think, than Fontaine has with USC. I think Fontaine has dribbled the ball way, way too much, which takes a lot away from uh, uh, Vucevic or, or Stevenson or any of their scorers. And there, he was just very fortunate that he did draw a foul. And we saw him turn it over the first uh, two times USC had the ball. He's got six points as Marcus Morris for Kansas picked up his first foul, the 16th foul at Kansas. Montan was on the Atlantic 10 all-rookie team before transferring mid-semester. He played for Bob Hurley. Uh, he was Bob Hurley's captain at St. Anthony's High School in Jersey on a 32-0 team back in 2008. Morningstar fouled on the jumper by Garrett Jackson who just came into the game. And, and you know, the defensive man came from Morningstar's right. It was going to be a difficult shot for Morningstar to make. What he needed was a little shot fake. Now watch the defensive man. Here comes Morningstar. There's the defensive. He gets him a little bit off balance to begin with. And there again is a three-point opportunity that never should have happened. Second time that Kansas has been fouled shooting a three. The first was uh, against Selby, and he made all three, Morningstar. I think one of the things that, that I got early in my coaching career from Claire B., one of the all-time great coaches, was that mistakes are far more important in the game than great plays, and that, that mistakes have a much bigger effect on the outcome of the game. And there's three points from a mistake. It was not a great play. It was a mistake that was made by the defense. And... I put up a sign from what Coach B said. Victory favors the team making fewest mistakes. So that's six points for Kansas uh, on those two threes with the foul on USC. They're where, 10 to 12 at the line as a team. Where there was nothing really gained uh, by the foul or the attempt at blocking the shot. Here's Bryce Jones off the bounce with a two won't go. See, there is an example of a really good shot fake, and Morningstar went out of the box with it. Selby with the floater, no. He's two of four now from the field. Uchevich still has not attempted a shot for USC. He's their leading scorer. At five and black. I think I'd want to work with Vucevic inside a lot. Vucevic and Stevenson, whatever their combination is going to be inside, uh, rather than spending so much time with the ball on the dribble on the perimeter. Here's Stevenson down low, challenged by Morris, who's called for the foul. That's his second 17 foul on Kansas. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Sunday, UConn's 87 game win streak on the line as the Huskies play in the Maggie Dixon Classic against number 10, Ohio State. It's on ESPNU tomorrow at 2 Eastern, part of Holiday Hoops, presented by Kay Jewelers. Most times inside, Dave, when a big guy goes to help, if he has to move toward the ball, he's going to commit a foul when he leaves his feet. If the ball is coming to him and he goes up in the air, times his jump, then he's got a chance to block it or at least deter the accuracy of his shot. But once you start moving toward the man with the ball and you leave your feet, almost invariably it's going to be a foul, which was the case here. That's the second and Marcus Morris. You saw Selby going to the bench. Great seven or eight minutes for Selby. And his debut. Or Kansas, he's got half of the Jayhawks' points. Stevenson missed them both. Kansas ball leading by eight with eight to play in the first half. I think that was a good move to give Selby a little break, get him out of there. Did a good job when he was in there. Robinson with a kick out to Taylor. Finds Morningstar. Oh, see, that was a shot fake opportunity for Morningstar that he didn't take advantage of. He's under some pressure to shoot it. And Robinson inside cleans it up, and Kansas leads by 10. 
Robinson has been a real great addition to these guys, to the Morris brothers, in that he's averaging almost 10 points a game, so they're getting 40 points a game out of their inside people. I don't like Vucevic coming out on the floor like this. I'd want him inside where he can do some damage. He's not going to hurt anybody out there. And it seems like every possession he's been out there. Handling the ball. They throw it to him here. The double team immediately comes. Shot clock at six. Fontana on the drive. Another offensive foul. Second personal on Fontana. That's, that's a great result of the help defense that Kansas gives on the drive. Excellent defense. No score. All right, John here. Josh Selby in eight minutes has ten points, and he's two of three from behind the arc. And we get a look at his shooting form here. We thought, uh, Dave and I thought before when he was warming up, we didn't like his arm extension. But here, right there, he has perfect arm extension. His head is in front of his feet. He's going up into the basket, and he does the same thing. On the next shot he takes, watch his arm, fully extended. Hand follows over like he's trying to stick his hand in the bucket after the ball. Kansas out of the timeout gets a bucket by Taylor on the pass from Tyrell Reed, and Kansas has its largest lead of the day. You know, Taylor was very alert to the circumstances, Dave. He came in, caught the pass like he was going to go to the bucket, saw that it might be a charge, stopped, and went straight up in the air. That was tremendous body control by Taylor, but even more important, he reacted to what he saw. Taylor's first basket. Kansas by 12. Stevenson one on one with Thomas Robinson and Stevenson unable to hit and backside rebound for Taylor. There's Relaford who started the game for Markeith Morris. Now both those guys on the floor at the same time. Excellent entry pass. Robinson with the bucket. And another USC timeout. Here. The Kansas perimeter really looks well inside. They look very well inside to the post people. And Kansas opens up a 14 point lead at home. USC has missed eight straight shots, has gone almost seven minutes without a field goal, and now trails Kansas by 14 points. Here's a good look on a lob pass inside. Really good position inside with the post play of Kansas. Relaford adds there, there's nothing slides when Relaford comes into ball game, Dave. Solid bench there for Kansas, outscoring everybody for USC. Another outside shot by Fontan that won't go. They're going to go inside here again. They're going to get Relaford coming across high low. Robinson instead takes the jumper. He's short with it, but there's Reed getting the offensive rebound. Go back out with it. Morris into the lane and Marquise off. There's Robinson. Can't put it back in though. It's twice down there. That was an opportunity uh, for Morris to go back out with the ball. He wasn't going to go anywhere inside. Vucevic's first shot of the game. They need to get him more touches. That's his ninth made three of the year. And you know they need to get him inside where he can do some things. He, he's quick enough. He can go right or left. He's going to draw some fouls inside. They're missing a lot of their offense by not getting him the ball where he can score with their attempt to score. There's a great high-low situation. And Robinson with the basket again. When, like when Relaford came up the lane, the defensive man can just not get on top of him because the only thing left then is the baseline as a defense. Let him come up the lane, stay behind him, drop help back from in front, but don't give him a chance to throw it over your head. Uchevich one-on-one -on -one with Markeith Morris, and then Tyrell Reed comes over and makes a good defensive play. Here's Marcus Simmons on the drive. Got it stripped by Relaford. Here's Taylor in a great defensive play by Maurice Jones. Taylor was a little too greedy there. He was one on two and tried to split him, and they did a good job shutting the lane off. Relaford made a great defensive play a moment ago. He stopped the drive, then got a hand on a pass. Good deed by Robinson, but they're going to get him for a foul. That's his first 18 foul on Kansas. 
So Stevenson will shoot one and one as Selby returns. Eight minutes played, ten points to lead all scores. Did not start today. He suspended the first nine games of the year by the NCAA for accepting impermissible benefits from a family friend. And he's rated number five by the ESPNU Top 100. Some uh, rating systems had him number one. Bill Self says this is probably the highest recruited player I've ever had at Kansas. I think sometimes those rating systems are devised by a guy that makes donuts in the back of a bar somewhere. <laughs> Seems like uh, they're wrong as often as they're right, huh, Coach? Here's Johnson for the entry. Instead, Selby outside feeding the post. Markeith Morris into the double team. Leaning in, can't get it to go, and Stevenson clears. They haven't gotten the ball out of the low post nearly as well as they usually do here the last three possessions, Dave. Uh, when Morris or whomever gets the ball, they're trying to do something with it against two people rather than just give it up. Selby to Johnson leaves it for Relaford. Good block by Simmons. And then a foul called on Simmons, swatting Jeff Withy. Meanwhile, Fontaine turned it over again for USC. The Trojans struggling on offense, having trouble stopping Kansas in the paint. Back to Lawrence in a moment. KU by 13. John, they lost last night to Charlotte, so they have two losses to unranked teams this week. There are 12 teams in college basketball, including Kansas, still undefeated. And Connecticut playing Ohio State tomorrow, looking to make it 88 straight wins. Tennessee is the next opponent for USC after the Trojans get done with their game here at Lawrence. Bill Self's team with a healthy lead right now, 13 points. You know, Dave, anytime I see USC or read about USC, I think about one of the really, really good coaches in my time in coaching, and that was Bob Boyd during his tenure at USC and then later at Mississippi State. Bob was one of the really, really bright people that I ever talked to about basketball. He was in a class with guys like Pete Newell and Claire B. And, and uh, no, Bob's home watching the Tro his Trojans play. And uh, there's not been a better coach nor a better friend than Bob Boyd. Well, USC has struggled uh, the last few years. Uh, they were ineligible for postseason play last year because of what went on. The alleged O.J. Mayo scandal during Tim Floyd's reign there. Kevin O'Neill taking over a year ago. Self-imposed sanctions kept USC out of the postseason last year, but trying to bounce back this season, 6-4 and four on the year. Kansas 9-0. Here's Stevenson to Vucevic down low, and goaltending called. All right, now that's the best move on offense that Southern Cal's had. No one dribbled the ball. Nobody tried to force the ball. There were four passes made. The ball was reversed twice, and the two guys inside, Stevenson and Vucevic, really worked well together. Stevenson the pass, Vucevic the score. That's what they've got to do. That's maybe the first time we've seen him catch it that deep on the low block. As Morris kicks it out to Selby, off the mark from three. He's two for five now from the floor. Ten now, points in nine now minutes. Now there right. again was a shot fake. Team money, Chris. That guy's coming at you. Give him that shot fake and let him go up and kiss his girlfriend in the stands. You're standing <laughs> there with a wide open shot. There. Jones letting it fly, and he's off the mark from three. See, I, Jones and Fontan are not as aware of what's going on inside as they should be. They just got to bucket the previous possession inside, go right back inside. Markeith Morris has it poked away by Vucevic, but gets it back. Selby with a good feed, and Morris couldn't hit the layup. And it ends up in the hands of Fontaine. Selby was really aware of the cut that Morris made there because it was just a touch and pass right away. He didn't keep the ball in his possession more than a split second. Vucevic hit a three from there earlier, short with that one. Elijah Johnson looking to push the tempo. Selby being patient. The Kansas team that leads the nation in shooting at 56%, but just 33% so far in this one. 
Selby to the bucket. In and out. And cherry picking is Fontan for the easy layup to get USC within nine. It's a good timeout to take. You've got a, a really good margin uh, to begin with, but yet you've just you've just lost a little bit of it, and now uh, they get a breakaway bucket here. You lose a chance to score on the offensive end. You get this breakaway. And now I think Bill is looking at less a little over a minute to play. Let's jack that lead back up to 12 or 13 points. Maurice Jones with a good look ahead to Fontan, who now has eight points in his debut transfer from Florida. Got more college basketball for you later today on ESPN2, college football on ESPN as the bowl game start. Texas A&M, Arkansas at 2 Eastern, followed by Gonzaga and Baylor. And boy, the Zags could really use a non-conference win. Their resume doesn't look so good right now before they enter WCC play, although that loss to San Diego State didn't look bad as the Aztecs are in the top 10. Also lost to Kansas State. You saw them uh, hang in there against uh, Notre Dame a week ago. Well, you know, nobody plays a better schedule than Gonzaga does, and it's really kind of a smart thing. They get to play against great opposition. Then they go into their league. They still have two chances, the league championship, the tournament championship, to get to the NCAA tournament, and probably the best prepared team against good competition in the country. They play Baylor today. Good defense by Bryce Jones, but Kansas maintains possession. There's Selby to Taylor, shot clock at eight. Taylor to the basket, contact, no, the follow by Marquise Norris. Southern Cal's dropped his defense back just a little bit to protect that distance, 18, 19 feet from the bucket, and they've done a pretty good job keeping the ball out of uh, Kansas' hands in the low post. USC will hold for the final shot of the half. Trying to get it down to single figures going into the locker room. We will make sure here that Kansas does not get a chance to score. You want to score, but just as important, don't give them a chance. Stevenson with a short jumper rattles out. One second left. Morris gets the handle. And almost hit it from midcourt. Kansas with an 11 point lead and Josh Selby the leading score in the game with 10 points. He had his first two threes. Pedro Gomez standing by with Bill Self. Coach, what did you think of the first half with Josh's debut? Oh, he played well. Our team didn't play very well offensively, but we played the best we played probably all year defensively. And, you know, we got we to gotta keep in the attack mode. We're kind of just standing around watching other guys play right now. All right, thank you, Coach. Dave? And Pedro Self told us before the game his team hasn't played a complete game yet, so we'll see how they respond in the second half with an 11-point lead over USC. Time now for the K Jewelers Halftime Report. We go back to the studio, John Saunders and Andy Katz. All right, guys, thank you. Back in Lawrence, Kansas, Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. We're a week away from Christmas and an early gift for Kansas fans getting to watch Josh Selby, who is outstanding in his debut. Dave Pash back with Bob Knight, Pedro Gomez here as well. Coach of Kansas comes in shooting 56% from the field, which leads the nation. They didn't shoot it great in that first half, but Selby played very well when he was out on the floor. You know, I thought that Selby really handled this with as much hoopla as there was to his uh, first game at Kansas. Has handled it very well. He didn't overcommit with the ball on the dribble. Uh, maybe took a couple of shots that he shouldn't have after he hit the first couple, but all in all, it was pretty good. But we're sitting here looking at very poor shooting, Dave. Uh, right now, uh, these two teams are 18 for 51, and of Kansas, nine baskets, six of them came from inside, uh, and then they missed some opportunities inside. Kansas plus six over USC on the free throw line. Buchevic struggled, although he only took three shots and all those were late. Pedro Gomez had a chance to talk with USC coach Kevin O'Neill. I did, David. One of the things he said is that be prepared. He told his players, be prepared for Kansas to have at least one big run in the second half. If they have two, there's no way we can beat them. He thought Gio Fontan was a little nervous playing in his first game. He also said that coach Bobby Knight was absolutely right that they've got to get Busevich more involved in the low post. They get five points, two of three shooting. And a 
see if they can get him touches on the low block. Hit a three. And his other basket is on a goal 10. He's our leading scorer at 16 points per game. Gio Fontan making his debut transfer from Fordham was two of six. Maurice Jones' backcourt mate was 0 for two. And Jones is their second leading scorer. They look like they're set up like, like you've been talking about all along with uh, uh, Vucevic down low. Uh, they've got Stevenson high. Uh, see if they, there he goes, right off the, very, what a good move that was. But the ball gets stuck, and so on the possession arrow, it will go to Kansas as Selby starts the second half of KU. Got to make that, it was really a good move. Stevenson was out on top, and the ball went down uh, to Vucevic, who hits the second postman coming to the bucket. you got to dunk that. I mean, you've got to go up and just knock that one in. Plus, he's 6'10", and Tyrell Reed, who is coming over, is six feet three inches tall. He just didn't do a very good job at all getting his getting his butt down uh, uh, and coming up off off his feet with a lower center of gravity. The defensive play by Vucevic. Markeith Morris is starting the second half. He did not start the game. So two players who did not start the game, Markeith Morris and Josh Selby on the floor for Bill Self to start the second half. Working around to Dante Smith, who buries a triple, a much-needed bucket for USC. Now, let's see if on the next shot he uses a shot fake to get free. Kevin O'Neill going to his bench to start the second half with Dante Smith, coming off a career-high 22 points in his last game. SC has been a little more patient with what they've done here, Dave, than they were in the first half. Marcus Morris knocking down the short jumper. I don't think that, that either of the Morrises a big threat taking the ball to the bucket. So when they do have the ball within shooting range, crowd them more than you are. Get into them tough. Don't give them a free uh, movement up into the air to take the shot. And we've seen him make a couple of those, and he also hit a three in the first half. Kansas by now 10. Kansas will double up on the post every time. You've got to look in, and when you get it in the post, you've got to look opposite for that other post man right away. Stevenson slams it through this time off a great pass from freshman Maurice Jones. Now that was one time when Jones was really looking for somebody else. You know, we've talked about those guards that look to take a shot, and they'd been doing that, but not that time. Marquise Morris hits a three. That's his fifth of the year. He was 10 of 19 a year ago. I think we started out the game almost with with more uh, with Marcus Morris hitting a three. Yep, hit one in the first half. Markeith gets one in the second. Selby forced third. Three triples in the debut for Josh Selby, the freshman from Baltimore. SC had actually gotten off to a really good start here in the second half. But they find themselves down 14 to Kansas. An impressive first game for Josh Selby, who had to sit out the first nine games for an NCAA violation. He's got 13 points in 14 minutes, and Pedro Gomez standing by with his biggest fan, Pedro. Well, probably the proudest person in the stands, but also maybe the harshest critic. She was telling me how he, she's upset. This is Mayshawn Witherspoon, Josh Shelby's mother. She's upset that he's missed four shots. What do you think of his game so far? I think he's playing well, under control. He's great playing defense right now, but he missed four shots and a free throw. So we're going to have to work on that. What is it like to finally get to see him in a Kansas uniform? I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy for the city of Kansas. I'm happy for, you know, our family, the fans back home in Baltimore. It's just a, a blessed day, and I can't get no happier than this. What does he need to work on? Uh, right now, he got a foul. We, you know, that, that's not good enough, but uh, just staying in rhythm, just keep keeping the chemistry going and being a great teammate, which, we're, you know, I'm happy about. I know he's just happy to be out there, and we're happy to be here. Kansas is a great place. There's no place like KU. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mayshawn Witherspoon, Josh Selby's mother. Dave, back to you. And Pedro, how about that? She uh, obviously, I'm sure, was upset seeing her son get the foul, but was able to keep her composure as she did the interview, kind of like Josh has done on the floor today despite all the nerves and playing his first game here at Allen Fieldhouse as Reed's three spins out. Kansas really works hard at doubling up when the ball goes in the post. And when they get it inside, 
their postman, whether uh, uh, it is Vucevic or Stevenson, has got to look opposite right away. And if they do, they're going to get some right there. Look, op that's very good. Look opposite. Perfect. And Vucevic from Stevenson. USC really executing better here this half. Much, much better. And we're going to see how the postmen work with one another here, and they recognize what they're going to go against. The ball's going to go in on the left-hand side of the post, going to go into Vucevic right here. He immediately looks opposite, gets it out. Now the Kansas defense has really got adjustments to make, and they overcompensate here. They're almost helping too much, and they've got to cut that out a little bit, particularly if SC uses both postmen. Seven points for Vucevic came in, averaging 16 and a half. He's touched it a lot more here in the early going in the second half. You know, I think that's a great point, Dave, because I think he's handled the ball more inside in the first couple minutes, first three and a half minutes, than he did the whole first half, and he knows what to do with it. USC 6-4 and four on the year. They beat Texas handily, 73-56, but they also have a loss to TCU. They blew a 20-point lead against Nebraska, lost by 20 to Ryder, and then lost to Bradley when they fouled a Bradley player shooting a three with three-tenths of a second left. Kansas, meanwhile, 9-0, and, and they've won 64 in a row at home. That's the longest active streak in college basketball. Taylor on the drive, tough shot, got it to go off glass. You know, you really need a rule on defense uh, for your players, Dave, that you cannot foul a man shooting a three. Then that way, you're not going to foul, and you're not going to be susceptible to the shot fake either. Vucevic inside again. Well, you talked about in the first half, Kansas fouled twice shooting a three. They made those free throws, so they're plus six on the foul line, all when USC has fouled them shooting a triple. Now, Cal did a good job of helping there. Stevenson came to the ball really fast on the throw in, was able to get a double up. Now, this time, Kansas went away from its double team inside. And Stevenson with a three-point opportunity. USC was down 14 about a minute ago, and they've got a chance to get within six. What, what they needed to do there, they, uh, being Kansas, they need to drop in from on top because they keep Morris, and he gives up the bucket. They were down eight late against Baylor. And they won their 80th straight earlier in the year. UConn came back. We'll see him tomorrow on ESPNU. Kansas on top by seven. You're watching Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers. USC as Alex Stevenson misses the three-point opportunity. Back within seven. The Trojans had six, have six field goals. They had seven the entire first half. You know, combined, Dave, we said they were 18 for 51, both teams in the first half. And now in the second half, they're like eight for 14 or 15 to start the second half combined. Offensive foul on Morningstar. His first 13 foul on Kansas in the half. You see USC six of seven, much more efficient, executing well. They're getting it to Vucevic in the post. Let's see what they do it here. Facing the double team. He finds an open man. A three won't go, though, for Dante Smith. Sometimes you make a fake pass inside and draw that double team, and then you can reverse the ball and get something pretty good out of it. You don't have to throw it in there when you know the double team's coming. Make a little fake pass, reverse the ball, make that double team come the other way. Watch this now. There's Now he gets it in. You see, you had three of the five guys all around that postman, so if you reverse the ball quickly, you've got four years playing against two of theirs. Taylor misses the free throw. Maurice Jones picked up his second foul first on USC. That's something that the feeder has got to recognize right away. He catches it, he looks inside, he sees help coming, get it reversed, and maybe we've got something really good on the other side, where, as I said, it could be three versus two or even four versus two. One out of two for Taylor. Kansas lead back to eight, led by 14 early this half. Vucevic calling for it on the low block. Nothing wrong with USC taking some patience here. Well, Stevenson shoved, uh, shoved Robinson inside. No foul was called, and Vucevic can't hit. Stevenson there with a rebound, and then he gets tied up. 
It'll stay USC basketball on the alternate possession error. They reversed the ball there well, and uh, Vucevic was really set uh, on the outside. Uh, and, and as long as they get a postman set on the outside like that, he's a threat to take it right up and shoot it as he did. USC will play at Tennessee on Tuesday, so this is a tough road trip, although the balls coming off two losses this week against unranked teams. I think they're looking at the clock. Yeah. I think the clock, uh, the shot clock is at 34, and I think it's got to take some time off of that. The officials are discussing it. Marcus Morris has three fouls for Kansas, so he's on the bench. The leading scorer in the game is Josh Selby with 13 points in 17 minutes. Let's keep an eye on the shot clock here. Actually, that's about what it should be. We'll take a look. Mike Reed, along with Tony Padilla and Mike Cyphers, our officials today. That's Mike there, about to put the headset on. USC trying to uh, end Kansas's 64-game home win streak. Kansas had a close call earlier this year against UCLA. USC came out in the second half playing much, much better at the offensive end than they had in the first half. Had they not done that, I think this game would be uh, uh, on the road home right now. So they've done a very good job getting themselves turned around a little bit at the halftime. Now we mentioned this is the first game for Kansas with Josh Selby. This is also the first game for Kansas this year without Mario Little, who is suspended this week indefinitely after being arrested on battery charges early Thursdays. Again, you look at the shot clock. It resets on the miss by Vucevic. And Stevenson then tied up. Just to finish the point in Little, Mario Little, a senior from Chicago, gives them some energy off the bench, six points per game. The guy that has battled injuries and had a red shirt last year, but Bill Self was hoping that he'd be a big contributor this year, but they're without him right now, suspended indefinitely. Arrested early Thursday and mentioned several charges, including battery. And also property damage charges as well. I think that uh, one of the things that Southern Cal will have to work a lot with uh, is the idea of uh, uh, Fontan and working in with, with the other guards and the guards not taking over the game because they've got a really good inside game with Stevenson and, and Vucevic in there and the guards have to understand that that's the first priority we have. We get them going inside, then we're going to be able to get some stuff outside that we wouldn't ordinarily get. And sometimes it's hard to get guards to understand that there are bigger priorities than them driving and shooting. Meanwhile, Coach, they're telling us they were also looking, remember I said that it looked like Stevenson shoved the Kansas player. They were looking to see if he threw an elbow. He did not. There was no flagrant fouls. Kansas turns it over. Four on two. Great strip by Taylor. And now Kansas on the break with Selby. The lob, great pass, and the dunk by Robinson. That was a huge, huge turnaround for Kansas and it should have been really a turnaround for Southern Cal on that first possession. They, they had to make the bucket on that first possession. This gave Kansas unbelievable momentum, Dave. And a crowd on its feet. Loud, loudest they've been today here at Allen Fieldhouse. With the exception of when Selby came into the game for the first time. The double team comes. Vucevic with a great look. And Selby picks up the foul, grabbing Stevenson. I think when the ball goes outside like that on the baseline, that you're over, overworking your double team because they, they have to have a very quick move back uh, to be able to, to cover the whole floor when they double team on the baseline. And they got that bucket, obviously, on a great pass uh, from a very good steal. Selby picking up a second foul, 14 foul on Kansas. And Stevenson hitting the first free throw. He's just two of six at the line so far in the game and came in 35% free throw shooting. 
He's, he's stiff with his free throw. Watch his arms here. He's very stiff. He holds the ball out in front of him. Uh, very stiff. He doesn't flex his wrists a little bit. He just takes it up and shoots it. Made both of them, but I always think you need to just jiggle the wrists a little bit to free your the tension up in your hands and your wrists before you shoot a free throw. He's from Los Angeles, started out in North Carolina, then transferred back home to USC. Robinson with the dunk off the miss by Taylor. Both the big guys, Stevenson and Vucevic, came to help, and nobody rotated back down. That's why he was so wide open with no block on it. And now 10 points for Robinson, Vucevic. There's that cross-court opposite side pass you're talking about, Coach. The three doesn't go, though, for Bryce Jones. That was a perfect time for the shot fake on that cross-court pass. Double dribble called on Selby, could not get the handle. We're going to see both of those big kids from Southern Cal come across the lane right here. Nobody takes the block out on the weak side or on the side opposite the ball. There has to be a rotation there. Kansas getting good minutes out of Thomas Robinson is in for Marcus Morris, who has three personal fouls. Reverse the ball, have patience. Jones on the drive. Out to Dante Smith, rattles a three in and out. Selby tracks down the long rebound. Again, in trouble with a handle, but a reach-in foul on Jones. I think that uh, Smith, that's his third. Got a little bit of a break there, Dave. He was kind of out of control on the dribble there. That's a, that's a time when a guard comes down with the ball. He's going a little bit too quick. The defense is back. Just move the ball to the outside of the court and rely on your half-court defense. Set it up, and now let's start working some movement and some screening to get a good shot. Let's don't force something that isn't there. So Selby comes out of the game in a bad pass. Nobody home for Kansas. Smith and a block by Robinson, but foul is called. USC wants the bucket to count, saying it should be goaltending on Robinson. They're saying no. I think they're foul. saying that the, that the foul occurred with the ball below the rim. Let's see if that's the case here. And if that is the case, that's right there. The foul was before the shot, and the ball was below the rim, so there's no goaltend there. Tyrell Reed picking up his second foul. 15 foul on Kansas. One more free throw for Dante Smith. Has six points in the game in nine minutes. Make that seven points now for Smith. Missed the second one. One of the things I like about Kansas is that they really come hard off the defensive end of the floor, but they'll back it off if there isn't anything there. They, they bring it down quickly to see if there is something, and if there isn't, then they make a move, go to their inside game. Taylor Droven was grabbed by Marcus Simmons, second foul on him, third on USC at half. You know, there isn't anything more important than not committing fouls. You know, the, the foul by the defensive man so many times allows the offense another chance, just like this. Taylor's going to have to make a great play to come out of that drive with a score, and maybe he would, but chances are he wasn't. But somebody gets overzealous, grabs him, puts him on the line. Back into the game comes Elijah Johnson. Are the reach-in fouls the one that, that drive the coaches crazy? I, I think so. Any time that, that, that you get a foul uh, with somebody in a difficult position, you're fouling somebody that's in a difficult position with the ball, either off the dribble or maybe having been fed in the post, chances are the percentages are good that you can come out of it if you don't foul. And if you do foul, you've just given them something. You've given away points. Kansas by 11, trying to extend its home winning streak to 65 in a row. USC got within seven, but Kansas back up 11. Jayhawks led by 11 at the half. Now Selby making his debut. Played very well for Kansas off the bench. Dante Smith knocks down a triple over Tyrell Reed. Ten points now for Smith. That's his third three. Reed on the drive, got to the basket, easily a score. 
the Southern Cal inside defense made no move whatsoever to slide in to help on that move, and Reed took a great advantage of the opening that he had. That's only his first bucket. Reed averages 10 points per game. Academic All-American who's a grad student here at Kansas. I'm to try and, and get that offense up a little bit higher so you leave you leave the, the Kansas defense in a one-on-one -on -one situation inside. Robinson tucked it last for a stay in USC basketball. But Kansas leading by 10. Josh Selby, the leading scorer in the game for Kansas, also showing his ability to give it up, finding Robinson on the alley-oop. Halftime. Down here are the other bowl games we have for you after the New Mexico Bowl here on ESPN. The Utro the Humanitarian Bowl, Fresno State, Northern Illinois, and Ohio and Troy in the RNL Carriers New Orleans Bowl. USC was seven to shoot, and they turn it over out of the timeout. And then a push by Bryce Jones on Morningstar. That's his second. Kansas is getting a lot of extra opportunities here because of fouls created uh, by SC. And, and pretty quickly, they're going to find themselves in a one and one situation, which again, as we've said, creates a huge advantage. That's a 14 foul on USC. Kansas was plus six on the free throw line in the first half. Marcus Morris back on the floor for Kansas. So is Selby. He's off the mark with that shot. Selby 13 points, now three of eight shooting. A little off balance there, pressured pretty good. Has to learn that when he takes the shot, want to make sure that it's an open shot, that you can have good mechanics in the shot. That was just not a very good choice. Fontan with a driving dish, and Butevic able to grab the loose ball and stick it in to get USC back with an eight. All of Selby's baskets have been three-point shots. As Marquise Morris spins with the left, couldn't hit it, and took a shot to the face, so a late foul called on Stevenson. Blow to the head, that's the first foul on Stevenson to hit on USC. Well, see, this is another one of those very, very unnecessary fouls. He's done a good job there, and then I'm not sure... It was almost like he took a swipe going with his arm to get the ball and, and contacted uh, Morris in the head doing so. But Southern Cal had the ball. Without that foul, they're at the other end working on their offense, and now they're giving away two. Instead of uh, an opportunity to get maybe within six, could be down ten as Morris hits the first free throw. I always thought it was so important that we committed fewer fouls than the opponent did. I mean, we really worked hard at that. And I mentioned before that one of the people uh, that I enjoyed tremendously talking to over the years was Bud Grant. And, and Bud used to always say to me, remember, it's not the great plays, it's the mistakes that win for one side or cost the other side the game. The team making fewest mistakes has the best chance of winning, and fouls so often are mistakes. Speaking of Bud Grant, that Monday night football game that's going to be played outdoors, that's going to feel like a Bud Grant coached game <laughs> outdoors where the Vikings used to play when he was there. I, I think he used to have his players wear short sleeve shirts, too. <laughs> Marcus Morris off the mark from three. Maurice Jones hands it off for Fontan, and the Fordham transfer playing at his first collegiate game gets USC within seven on a three pointer. USC hanging around, and Vucevic gets his hands on it, and the Trojans can cut it to five. Very good defense by Vucevic. His positioning was good. He kept his hands off the offensive post, and there's a foul right there. And Fontan with another three-point opportunity, unless the official says that he was fouled before the shot. No, nope. count the basket. Morningstar picking up the personal. All right, now we're going to come down. Here's the three. Defensive, defensive man gets hung up by the screen, and here's an opportunity to drive the ball to the bucket, and Morningstar gets caught on a side saddle position. In other words, he's not head up to the ball. He's on the inside of the ball, and that allows the outside drive or the baseline drive. Kansas calls a timeout, two remaining for the Jayhawks. Let's check in with Pedro Gomez for more 
on Geo Fontana has come alive here in the last minute. And Dave, yesterday in speaking to Kevin O'Neill, he said that not only is Fontana his best player, he says he's his best scorer, his best leader, his best everything. He also said that if Fontana had been with the team from the beginning, he honestly believes that USC would be 9-1 and one right now instead of 6-4. and four. Dave? Well, you remember last year what Mike Garrity did when he came in mid-season for USC, and uh, the Trojans hoping to get the same kind of effort out of Gio Fontana. I think that Kevin uh, is a little bit optimistic in, in changing uh, to nine and one. <laughs> yeah, they lost by 20 to Ryder. They blew a 20 point lead against Nebraska. Lost to a Bradley and TCU as well. Kansas unbeaten, one of 12 schools undefeated coming into this Saturday. Jayhawks have won 64 in a row at home. Their closest win during that stretch was earlier in the year against another Pac-10 team. They beat UCLA by one. And now their lead is down to four against USC. Big difference in this half, Dave, is the fact that Stevenson uh, and Vucevic have been in the game much more and in the planning much more on offense in the second half than they were in the first half. And also on defense, Vucevic with another good play on that end. Gets the block. USC can cut the Kansas lead at two, maybe one. Vucevic block there was really extraordinary because he did not put himself in a position where he drew the foul. He got the block uh, with no thought of the foul. That was a very, very good play. Dante Smith in the traffic, hands it off, bucket for Stevenson, and another three-point opportunity for SC. No, they're going to take a little bit of time here in their in their offensive possession, which makes them play a lot more defense than they were in the first half. Now, we saw the tail end of that. Drive brings a big man uh, from Kansas off the big man, in this case, Stevenson from SC, a really good drop-off pass. But the patience that led to that setup was the key. R. Keith Morris picking up the foul. 17 foul on Kansas, an 11-2 run. And nine straight for the Trojans in the last minute, but a push called on Dante Smith. There's no question that it was a good call. It was a, a body shove. He got into him with his stomach and his chest. Uh, again, no reason to. He's actually driving toward the corner. Jeff Tapp, they get Fontan. That's his third personal. Taylor down the lane over Stevenson. No. Outlet to Fontan numbers. USC looking to take the lead. Great block, but the putback by Fontan after the rejection by Reed. USC. They're going to wave the basket off and say foul before the bucket. Good help defense at the other end got this thing set up. And now the free throw has become a real weapon in this game for Southern Cal. Uh, has been the last two or three times now. And now they're going to go down the wire with a real advantage from the free throw line. So Reed picking up the foul on the initial attempt. Dante Smith was hard to hear the whistle in this building as USC has the lead for the first time today. Remember, Kansas has won 64 in a row at home. That's the longest active home win streak in college hoops. The Southern Cal isn't coming out as far as they were in the first half. They're playing three-point line defense. They make a good switch there. Here's Relaford. Shot clock at seven. They go to Marcus Morris on the baseline. Good move by Vucevic. See, Vucevic just did not take away the drive. He gave up the baseline. You've got to force him back into help. As soon as he receives the ball, take away the baseline drive. Make him come where there's help. And then there's another really unnecessary foul that's going to cost SC a possession. Offensive foul on Dante Smith. And that's number four on him. Watch how Vucevic gets set up to the inside. Right there. He's too high on him. He's got to be squared up to stop that drive. Back here in Lawrence, Kansas, leading by one. The two inside guys for SC, Alex Stevenson and Nikola Vucevic. 
have a combined 18 points in the second half after totaling just nine points in the first half. And they've done a much better job as a team utilizing uh, Vucevic and Stevenson in the second half. And, and so have those two guys done a better job of positioning themselves and working uh, to the bucket once they get the ball. And the big reason why USC has come back from 14 down. They had the lead a moment ago. Kansas back up one and then a missed three by Reed. Tech alive though by Robinson and a USC foul. So both teams now with 18 fouls and free throws the rest of the way. They get Fontaine for his fourth. He and Dante Smith both with four fouls. That was a bad break for Southern Cal, Dave, because they did a very good job defensing uh, the movement of Kansas uh, throughout the, the ball going inside, and then the ball just kind of took a, a Kansas bounce and resulted in the foul. That's... Uh, Robinson missing the one and one, but there was a lane violation. I wonder why they didn't blow the whistle right away on that. They, uh, they take away the first foul, and he still has the second one on that lane violation. Remember, this is a Kansas team that's 11th in the Big 12 in foul shooting, entering this game at 63%. They're at 75%, though, prior to that miss. Two opportunities for Robinson in the one and one couldn't hit either. After the lane violation, and USC can go back on top here. Reverse the ball. You've got a double team. you got two guys chasing. You get it back over here. See if they go inside, either Vucevic or Stevenson. Instead, Jones just fires up a three and tracked down by Thomas Robinson. A bad, bad possession. Terrible possession for Southern Cal. It was like 12 in the shot clock, too, when he let it fly. Relaford got free for a moment. Can't knock down the triple, but an offensive rebound by Robinson. And he missed badly. Stevenson made a great defensive play there in making it tough for Robinson to get the shot off, but he did not foul. He kept his hands straight up in the air, and he did not commit a foul. It was a great defensive play. Let's see if Bill Self goes back to... Uh, Josh Selby, who's been on the bench for a while. He's been their leading scorer. Yep, he's going to check into the next dead ball. Great defense by Robinson. Forcing the turnover. And he was in great position uh, to start that defensive play, Dave, because he was on the high side of him. But Kansas gives it right back, and then a foul on Reed. That's his fourth. 19 foul. Jones will shoot one and one. ESPN's the home court of college hoops. We've got a doubleheader for you on ESPN2 starting in 2 Eastern with Arkansas taking on Texas A&M. The Aggies, by the way, three years ago, the last team to win here in Lawrence. And then at 4 Eastern, it's number 9 Baylor, the other undefeated team in the Big 12, along with the Jayhawks, taking on Gonzaga. So Selby back on the floor. He's the leading scorer for Kansas today with 13 points, playing in his first ever collegiate game. They just called a technical foul on Bryce Jones of USC. And Casey just joined us and wondering who Josh Selby is. He's a freshman that was highly recruited but had to sit out the first nine games due to an NCAA violation. Hit his first shot when he came off the bench in the first half. He started the second half and has been brilliant as Kansas is clinging to a one-point lead. I'm not. I'm not sure what, uh, what 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 he did. Let's see here. You, Morris gets hit in the back by Jones, and uh, you know something like that. You come over and say, "Hey, you two guys, straight now. Let's play basketball." I don't believe there's a technical there. I, maybe one kid said something to the other one, and, and that isn't like he hit him with an elbow or a forearm or anything. You know, just straighten them out and, and say, "Hey." You know, break it up. Let's go. Very personal on Bryce Jones. So, Maurice Jones gets one more free. This is from the foul on Tyrell Reed on the breakaway. And Kansas will get technical free throw and then have the basketball as Bryce Jones is on the bench after picking up that tee. That's, that's where an official has got to step in and, and look at the severity of, of what happened. And, and there was no severity to it, actually. And, and to, to make that, instead of just going over and straightening the kids out and say, that's enough, I don't want to see any more of that, and then just keep playing. 
Reed missed the second one. That's his first miss of the season. He had made his first 17 free throws. Kansas ball with tied at 55. Morningstar back on the court, replacing Reed, who's got four fouls. We mentioned that Texas A&M was the last team to win here in Kansas back in 2007. They've won 64 straight here in Lawrence, entering today. Both teams in the bonus, Coach. They're working the double post, the high-low well. One Morris comes out, the other stays in the post. They're going to get Marcus Simmons for a foul, so Selby will go to the line for two. That's the 10th team foul now in USC. You know, Simmons had help come right there to, to the little drive that was being made, and yet he crowded him with his body, and there again, Selby had nowhere to go, uh, and the only thing that happened that was worthwhile was the foul committed. So that puts him up there to crack at two, when it just shouldn't have happened. Selby with 14 points, 5 of 6 at the foul line. That's where Simmons has to recognize, I've got help right here. Uh, I, I've got Jones over there. We're going to double up on him momentarily instead of trying to use the body uh, instead of the feet. Selby gets KU a two-point lead. When that double team happens, you got to get rid of it right away. Greg Jones still dribbling it. Gets it back from Stevenson. Right there. Come up on the high post. Almost a turnover. Simmons able to get to the ball. Stevenson contact. Uh, Paul Stevenson gets the layup and now has 18 points. As Abe Lemons once said, some places they'd call that a foul. <laughs> Not there. And now Marcus Morris grabbed, can't hit it, but he'll go to the line. Hey. Uchave is picking up a second personal. Defense has really good position here on Stevenson, and this has got to be a foul. I mean, there's no way that the defensive man holds his position. He's there watching. Morris doesn't move his feet. He gets knocked down. That's got to be a foul. Marcus Morris at 60% at the foul line this year. Mentioned Kansas. 63% is a team entering this game. Right now, 69% today at the free throw line. One out of two for Marcus Morris. It's a one point. Kansas lead with five to play. The ability to recognize the situation and then from that react accordingly is the most important thing there is to have in basketball. Marquise Morris with the steal in jail. <laughs> Jones had no idea where Morris was. That was just a pass, and I'm not even sure what his thoughts were. He's got Morris to, to get the ball by, and he's in the passing lane. You've got to see what's there. Everybody looks, but not everybody sees. And here you're going to see where Jones is going to look in the direction of his pass, but he doesn't see what can happen with Morris coming out there like he did. Freshman mistake by Maurice Jones. Will turn 19 years old on Monday. That was a costly giveaway, if, giving Kansas two points. If he was seven years old, he should have seen that. <laughs> Good point. So an easy bucket for Marquise Morris, who has 11 points. He did not start today. Bill Self saying he wasn't mad at him, just wanted a little bit more energy. He's gotten it, especially here in the second half. Morris did start the second half. Well, you know. For, for uh, Marquise to make that play, he was very alert. He saw the passing angle uh, that Jones had, and he just waited until he released the ball. That was a really good uh, good recognition on Morris's part. Bad recognition on Jones's part. USC with the ball down three. Here's Vucevic. He's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Fred gives it up. Dante Smith ties it with a triple. He's had a great afternoon shooting the three. Yeah, but I'll tell you, he doesn't need to go past here pounding his chest. He better think about getting back on defense. Selby can't answer. Morningstar with the offensive rebound and got it back up and in. 
Well, I hate it when kids make a good play and then they have to let everybody know that they know they made a good play. Just concentrate on playing the game. 4-3 for Dante Smith. Oh, he's going to try and go to the middle. He's going, there he is. Beautiful move by Bucevic, the most improved player in the Pac-10 a year ago. Well, that's where they've got to help. They, they, ba they go back and forth between their helping on the guy in the post and rotating back. I think they're going to really go to Vucevic and Stevenson right down the wire. There's Marcus Morris. Lost the ball. Ends up in the hands of Morningstar. Kansas led by 14 early in the second half. Looked like they're going to run away with this thing. But USC came storming back as Taylor lost it. Dante Smith to get the Trojans the lead back. That's his first two-point basket of the game. Marquise Morris, no, another offensive rebound by Morningstar. Morningstar's made two great play, plays in a row. What a good shot trick. Selby hits his score three. Selby was really set. If, if we ran that again right now, we'd see Selby's feet were set. He, was, he caught the ball. He went right up with it. He had really, really good recognition of his opportunity. 18 points to Selby in his first college game. After being suspended for an NCAA violation for the first nine games of the year. Stevenson with a turnaround. No. Vucevic. Morningstar reaching in to no foul call. Now they'll slow it up. We got plenty of time on the clock, and it's really important now. Get a chance to do something that gives you a chance to go to the free throw line. Morris Jones to the corner. The three goes. Dante Smith with his fifth three. He's got 20 points. Now, Smith has done a much better job in this half because he hasn't dribbled the ball as much as he did in the first half. Vucevic fouls Marcus Morris on the way to the basket. That's his third. Kansas shooting free throws the rest of the way. Number three, Kansas on the ropes at home, riding a 64-game win streak. But Josh Selby has had a great afternoon. The only man to better him is Dante Smith of USC, his fifth triple. Bob will see you shortly, depending on the outcome, obviously, here in Lawrence, as USC is leading on the road by two against a Kansas team that's won 64 in a row at home, the nation's longest active home win streak. And Marcus Morris at the free throw line, shooting two. Ten team fouls on USC, nine on Kansas. The Jayhawks struggles at the foul line. Becoming a factor. When, when you miss that first one, it tightens you up a little bit for the second one. Let's see what kind of emotion he has here. Got the second one. Good. That, was, that was good movement, good motion. Kansas within one, two minutes to go. Jayhawks one of 12 undefeated teams remaining in college basketball. Now you got it. All right, they didn't double up that time. They're playing more straight up now. Let's see if they, if they keep it like that. Make a little switch. There's Dante Smith, who has 17 of his 20 points here in the second half. Number 14, Black. Fontaine falling away. Gets bailed out. A foul called on Morningstar. Via two shot fouls. See, that's, that's what we've talked about the whole game. Here's a, I, I'm just, when I saw him go up to take the shot, I'm just saying, wow, to myself. What a wasted possession it is. And, and it certainly was. And then to foul on that possession. Morningstar is just too smart, too experienced to do something like that. One food. Fontaine will have one more. As Morningstar goes to the bench, he's got three fouls. Tyrell Reed, who has four, returns. One more free throw for Gio Fontaine. He's got 15 points in his first college game, a transfer from Florida. And Kevin O'Neill says is his best player. He missed the second one. Kansas can tie with a two or take the lead on a three. The Morris twins out there along with Taylor Reed. And the freshman Selby playing in his first game. Marquise Morris can't muscle it in. Tapped out to Marcus Morris. He's long with a three. Rebound by Dante Smith. Now, uh, uh, 
a USC possession here that results in a score is going to put Kansas in a very difficult position. And I just can't see. Everybody's standing. They need to have movement. Guys dribbling, that's fine. But get everybody else moving because a lot of things can happen. Don't just wait till the last 10 seconds. If you got people moving throughout this possession, you may get a cheap basket. Fontan to the hoop with the left hand. No, the tip won't go by Stevenson. Selby saves it. Kansas ball. Jayhawks down two and a timeout by Bill Self. Fontan took a very, very poor shot. And, and again, but I blame ball. that on USC's lack of movement. If you're waiting to get a really good shot in the end of a ball game like this, you've got to bring your offense up and everybody has to be moving. Give people a chance to back cut, give the defense a chance to, to overcommit, but just stand out there and dribble the ball for 20 seconds doesn't give you any chance to score. It has been 64 straight wins and almost four years since Kansas' last loss here at home. AC Law and Texas A&M beat the Jayhawks 69-66 back in February of 2007. Currently, the Jayhawks have the longest active home win streak in college basketball. They had a close win earlier this year against UCLA when Mario Little was fouled at the end of the game, hit a free throw to get Kansas the win. Little is suspended indefinitely, so he's obviously not available today as the Jayhawks find themselves in a situation where they're down two coach with 38.7 left. Are you going for a three here, or are you just trying to tie the game in this now, possession? I think you're just running your offense and getting the best shot you can get. And it's all the clock is all obviously in Southern Cal's favor right now. If if Kansas gets a two, it will be with the whole clock left till the game would go into overtime, and then SC gets a shot at the end to win. I think that they won't wait the shot clock out out here. No, they don't. Marcus Morris off balance shot his twin brother Markeith there, though, to get the loose ball. And now Selby spotting up. And the freshman in his first game. It's a huge three. Kansas by one. Timeout SC. That was it. That was pretty good defense by Southern Cal, but they had a chance to come up with the basketball during that possession, and they didn't. Right here, shot, good set. Selby had great footwork, great position. He went up with his head over his feet. You couldn't have asked for a better example of the right shot movement than Selby had. You know, and you talked about it before, Dave. It wasn't what we saw in the warm-up, but we've sure seen it in the game. He is 5 of 8 from 3, and you can see why Bill Self was so high on him and why all these students who had finals yesterday wanted to stay and watch Selby's first game. He suspended the first nine games and missed 15 practices for accepting impermissible benefits from a family friend. The NCAA suspended him for those nine games, so this is his first contest and he's had 21 points in 27 minutes all right coach usc ball down we'll one what are you looking for well i think the most important possession of this game was the previous sc possession where they stood and four people stood while guard dribbles a ball out on top and just wasted time wasted time without putting that was all for kansas's favor you get everybody moving you're going to get somebody maybe grab somebody uh, you've got an opportunity to drive where you get fouled on the drive uh, you've got to keep active during the whole possession not necessarily shoot it right away but give them a chance to foul you that was a bad bad possession for southern cal usc does have a timeout left trailing by one with 20.7 on the clock here's maurice jones a freshman right, they're going to probably get a little screen action inside all right, now they've got Jones to the basket, caught up in the air. Last touch by Kansas. USC ball with 6.4 seconds left. Trojans do have a timeout. We'll see if they use it here. Jones was looking to score rather than looking to pass the ball, and, and I'm not sure that's exactly what you want. You're going to have to catch it and get a shot pretty quickly here. USC calling its final timeout. All right, if you're Kevin O'Neill... 
What are you drawing up here, Coach? Well, I, I, I think what I would want here would be a situation where we've got the ball out of bounds right here. Right there's the ball out of bounds, all right? Now, I want my best shooter taking the ball out of bounds. We get a screen up in here somewhere, but we down screen that shooter and he comes off of it. We try and get the ball out where we can reverse the ball right to here and then go to Vucevic inside here. So the shooter coming off the screen here, maybe, maybe it's an up screen down out like this with the ball and then off the screen. But I want a shooter here. I want Vucevic right over here so that if we throw it long, it comes right down into him. They have 6.4 seconds. That's to plenty work of time. With. You can get it in. The clock doesn't start until he touches the ball inbound. So you could go from here to here and make two passes and get it. USC out of timeouts. Down one to Kansas. Dante Smith will inbound. Kansas is right, 64 Stevenson. straight at home. Inbound to Fontan. He stepped on the sideline and turned it over. USC has the foul now. See that? They wanted to leave that side of the floor where the ball was being inbounded open for somebody to cut into. And they needed their offense out high so you had more opportunity to cut. They foul Tyrell Reed. That's the one guy you don't want to foul. He made his first 17 on the year, but he did miss his last one. But even if he makes them, 4.2, not a ton of time, but enough to at least get a three-point shot you, you, off in the front court. You know, I used to run a drill where you can get a shot that's a fairly decent shot in four seconds, but you have to have a lead pass out of bounds. You've got to get the ball out 25 or 30 feet to be able to do that. And you've got to do it very quickly. They need two guards back. One of the big guys takes it out of bounds. One more for Reed. I was surprised that they broke the guard all the way over to the ball side rather than screen down or screen across inside and come out quickly. Running star on the floor for Selby. With the three to give Kansas the lead. Tyrell Reed with one more free throw. He missed it. That was good. That was a great miss. Here's Maurice Jones with one second left. He gets it off. Welcome to Major College Basketball, Josh Selby. Just like he's always been here, the game-winning bucket extending Kansas's home win streak to 65, the longest in the country. 21 points for Selby as the Jayhawks go to 10 and 0. The New Mexico Bowl with BYU and UTEP up next. That's the three that gave Kansas a one-point lead, and USC turned it over on its final possession. You know, the great thing on Selby's shot was that he was ready to take the shot, and he didn't try to create something that he didn't have. That was extremely good recognition. And Kansas beats USC 70-68. to This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Bob Knight, Pedro Gomez, I'm Dave Pash. So long from Lawrence. Now we send it to Albuquerque for the 2010 New Mexico Bowl. BYU and Utah.